Hello, everyone. This is Vanita Dillon again. Wonderful to have you this evening. And I have begun our recording. I uh, wanted to welcome everyone for our last virtual session. Um, it's one of my favorite topics of uh, learning to let go. We're joined by our Dean of Students, who you met briefly yesterday, and the Vice President of Student Affairs will be joining us momentarily. But before we get started with the topic, I just wanted to cover um, any um, cover the details for 17th and also open it up for any unrelated questions or those related to um, the move in time. And then we'll bring in our Dean and Vice President. So 17th, Saturday, we're excited to receive you here. Uh, you should have, your student should have received their um, time when they are expected to be on campus. Please arrive a few minutes early, park, come to the um, Physical Education Aquatic Center uh, and um, visit with us. The families can hang out with me and uh, some of our experts from campus while the students pick up their uniforms. Once they have their goodies, you'll go back to your car, drive up to your res hall, the driver stays in the car. You can go park in A, B, um, and D lots or back in lot O. We'll have shuttles running. So if you are in a lot, they'll bring you to another location that you've agreed to meet at. Um, we will have lunch available for everyone um, to um, at the marketplace. The price tag is $14. We would love for you to ask. SVP, you're seeing that on your screen. If you haven't scanned it yet, please do so. Um, you will have time between setting up your student in your room in their room till about 2:30, 3 o'clock when we would like for you to come down to um to the quad where the parents can uh, visit with the leadership while your students will be in learning how to get into formation and getting ready to do the capping ceremony. Right after that, you will participate in the capping ceremony. And after that, you will have a window of time till about 6.30 to either run an errand or to exchange uh, any uniforms that your student tried out earlier. Um, and make those exchanges back at PIAC. And then of course, be able to get uh, a meal together, come back and the parents will be ready or families will be ready to head home. And we will bring the students to their res halls and they have a floor meeting scheduled. Um, please, uh, what I wanted to remind everyone is make sure your students try out their uniforms so they know what doesn't fit or what might need to be exchanged. And then they get into their PT gear to come back down uh, for formation. So PT gear and try out your uniforms, two things that I wanted to emphasize today. Um, I will take any questions in chat now uh, with regard to um, move in day. I'll give it a couple of minutes and then um, um, We'll bring the Dean and the Vice President on. Uh, if your time is any time, you are welcome to come a little early and kind of hang out with us in PIAC, but we really expect you to be up at your res hall within 30 minutes of your check-in time. So earlier is not too problematic. Coming in late just pushes everyone um, out of schedule. And if you spend extra time in PIAC, that's, that's kind of okay. Um, and um, don't not not be too late. Uh, it's what is the deadline for uh, the RSVP for brunch? We'd like to know if you are uh, going to be joining us by Monday. So if you can do that by Monday the twelfth, that would be wonderful. Thank you for asking. Any other specifics about move-in day? All right. Um, in that case, uh, welcome Dean Prothero Jones and Vice President Branch. I am not seeing her. On oh, there she is. So um, <laughs> welcome, and um, Lennon, please take it away. Sure. Uh, well, hello again for those who were here yesterday. I was on the call, um, uh, but my name is Lennon Prothero Jones. I'm the Dean of Students here. 
at Cal Mary time. Uh, this is my second year as Dean of Students. Last year was my first full year. And um, yeah, it's it's been a great time. I'm glad to be here with you all. Hopefully we can now get a few questions and give some thoughts uh, and I'll pass it to uh, Dr. Carroll. Always do that. Hey, I'm Dr. Carol Branch. I go by Dr. Carol or DC. I am the acting vice president for student affairs. And in my day job, I am your director of Title IX and civil rights officer. I have, as of yesterday, been at the university for 14 months. Thank you both. Um, why don't I start with uh, a request for for you. Um, how have uh, for you, uh, DC? How uh, what what advice do you have for our students from your own personal experience of sending two kids to college? <laughs> so I was totally going to be that parent. I would have fixed everything before they got to the campus. They would have had the smoothest college career ever because I struggled so much and I wanted my kids to have the best experience without all that drama. Then I took my eldest sister with me to move my first daughter into college and she became that parent. She was wiping down the already clean room. She bought extra blankets when she already had three blankets, but she needed two more blankets. She did the most which allowed me to step back and say, okay, maybe I don't need to do that much. So it allowed me to become the cool parent. And I was the one who said, I won't call you multiple times a day. I'll call you once a day or sometimes every other day, you know, after we get used to you being six hours away from home. And then I said, you know, I will also be the one to help you navigate uh, some of the resources on campus because I work in a college, but I need you to learn these resources for yourself, begin to advocate for yourself, begin to find your own voice and enjoy the experience for yourself because this is your college experience. And then I said, you know what? I can go and not be the chauffeur anymore. <gasps> I'm no longer the chauffeur. I'm no longer the cooking for the entire band. I'm no longer, you know, picking up that last minute thing. So I got to enjoy rediscovering all the things that I found were my inner joys, my forbidden pleasures. So I began to find myself again, um, got a new dog, which was important. So my, I said to my sister, my kids, I, I got you a brother. Um, and, and so you give them the agency to be themselves. You step back a little bit, not too much where you can't be there to help, but you step back enough where they begin to find their own individual self and you enjoy the free time that you've regained. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. And for um, Lemon, how uh, you you're, you've um, you can speak a little bit more to your role, how you got to be the dean at Cal Maritime, and what you did before. But um, from your prior experience before your deanship, um, what is one thing that um, you saw students struggled with most with regard to family life, what they had left behind, what was ahead of them. What was their biggest challenge? Um, so yes, uh, thank you. And and uh, though I've been, I'm going into my second year as the Dean of Students here, I actually spent two years here prior as the Director of Residence Life. And before that, 16 additional years working in Residence Life. So I've, I've worked in student housing for a very long time. And so I've seen many transitions. And in a lot of cases, we become that kind of safety net for so many uh, students who go to universities. Um, that 16 years is at multiple universities throughout uh, uh, the US and overseas as well. So um, I think the thing that, though I wouldn't say consistent, I think one of the things that kind of jumps off the page to me is for uh, a lot of our students when they come in, um, they 
especially if they're the first of their siblings to go to college, even not even as well as if they're the first member of their family to go to college. But there's that there is that element of not knowing. You're like, you know, I think everyone think loves the idea of all this freedom and all the free time that they'll have and the distance and they can be them their own selves. But you know, you you you've had a rhythm for 17, 18, 20 years of your life. And you know, you've always been able to come home. Someone's maybe helped with your laundry or someone's had food ready, or at least you didn't have to pay the bills or handle the groceries or any of those other things. And being able to come into a space where there is that element of, oh, they it's not just the concept of homesickness, but it's just not knowing how is their sibling doing? How are their parents doing? How are their grandparents doing? How's their cousin? How's their friend down the street? How's their dog? How's their cat? Um, how's their snake if they own one? You know, like all those different um, parts of just realizing how much they don't know uh, does tend to, to, to be a gap. So um, as you balance how much to call, not too much, not too little, um, I think that that is something to be encouraged by is, is I do find that a lot of our students always do want to kind of be like him hey, a little worried about this. And um, and that helps. I think the more confident they are about their home life while they're away, the more they're able to invest and not use that brain power on not knowing. And And the worrying goes to studying and the concern moves to productivity or engagement. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely feel like that there's something there that I do see pretty consistently uh, uh, year to year. Thank you. Um, those were two questions that I wanted to kind of throw at you, but for the rest of our time together, uh, please feel free to share what you would like for from for parents from your experience. Um, the one thing that comes to mind is the care team. If you can, if you could share a little bit about how the care team works to kind of illustrate how wraparound services come together if there's a student who's who's got uh, some challenges. Yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so uh, without outlining my full resume and all the things that are part of my job, um, in my capacity as dean of students, there's a few areas I do oversee uh, directly. And then I have a number of other areas that do report to me that I work alongside uh, Dr. Carroll, who I currently report to, uh, to uh, provide services and support to your students um, or cadets. And uh, one of those key areas you we got a chance to talk about yesterday for those who are here, uh, but that's accessibility and disability services. So I serve as the acting director for that area, as well as I oversee our student conduct, which includes pretty much all of our incident reporting, crisis response, um, uh, care team, and BIT team, which is behavior intervention team. And um, the, the care team, what that is, is a, it's more of like a, a service-based committee that comes together. It has representation from our academic advisors who were on the call yesterday, members of the disability services who were on the call yesterday, uh, residence life, our police department, um, our, our counseling services who are strictly there as a, observers and advisors, not as a, a providing uh, details about confidential information, um, our athletics department, and um, in our Office of Cadet Leadership and Development. And what we do is we come together on a essentially a biweekly basis and we tackle the, I don't want to say the rumor mill, but the different things that are happening with our students. So um, usually there's a roster there of a number of different students in different situations that may have occurred since the last we met, our ongoing situations we're monitoring. But examples of things that end up on that is, you know, a student gets injured, um, at a sporting event, how do we support that student? How do we make sure that their faculty are aware of the injury? Uh, do they need accommodations? Do they need an alternative room assignment? Um, and we try to triage and think about all the ways we can support that student in all aspects of their, their uh, academic uh, experience on campus. Um, other examples could be um, you know, navigating someone who's maybe not attending class because of homesickness or other concerns, or something happened back home and they needed to come to go to uh, go handle it, uh, take care of siblings or look after family, and they need to be away for a week and a half. And how can we still support that person? How do we get in there with their faculty, not having them have to retell the, the challenge of that story 10 times, you know, but instead say, hey, work with us, 
help us understand what your need is. And then we try to do the things we can to move around to support that person to make sure that they can get that makeup exam or turn in those assignments late while they're navigating whatever that short term or, or long term crises or challenge may be. Um, uh, Many of those things are serviced just in-house. So sometimes that, like I did say, that is homesickness. That is things like roommate conflicts or, or other social challenges that they may be having. Um, sometimes it's just, hey, we got a call from a parent that said that there's, they talked to their student, it's October, and they just haven't felt like they've made many friends. And we'll come up with methods of saying, how do we engage that person? How do we either do some more targeted advertising with them? How do we have their RA reach out to them and bring them to other events? Um, or figure out what some of their interests are and see if we can connect them with some of the clubs and organizations. So we really try to strategize from that space um, for the stories we hear about. Now, we can't address things we don't hear about, but um, uh, we've been able to do a pretty good job. Uh, and I've been a part of this committee the last three years and now I lead it, but um, of really taking anything that we hear about and trying to find a way to connect that student to resources or be the resource for them. I have to piggyback on that because I'm not on the care team here, but at my last institution and parents would call because their students had so much fun or they were finding classes so kind of intense that they wouldn't call home for sometimes one student parent told me, I haven't heard from my student in a month. And so they want to know, had we seen their student? Can we have their student call home or bring them to the phone? And I said, well, I can't even tell you if your student goes to this institution um, but, you know, you check to see if there's a FERPA on file, you go, you know, even if you can't tell the parent anything in too in depth at that time, we'll find the student, you know, let them know you should probably call home and spend a month and then we can try to connect you that way. But, you know, we tend to have the ability to lay eyes on students multiple times throughout the week. And so trust that if you're looking out for your student or you feel there's something that needs to be attended to and you contact us, we can put them on the list for the care team and get them some assistance if needed. Thank you both. Um, I wanted to, before while you might be formulating some comments, I wanted to share the upcoming uh, family days. And that will be in October. We, uh, at the end of your students' six weeks, we try and connect them back to you and um, bring you back to campus and show you parts that you might have missed uh, up until now or up until then. Um, just wanted to go over um, briefly what we're planning. It's for October 4 and October 5. Friday and Saturday. Uh, we'll plan something for midday for you to come in for faculty engagement, working with several faculty right now for lecture style um, uh, engagement with the faculty uh, that'll lead into a concert on the waterfront uh, after which you'll be able to go out to dinner on your own with your student. Uh, the next morning we'll start with some donuts, maybe on the ship uh, where you get to meet our uh, awesome uh, ship's captain. And um, then we'll lead into some activities around campus that will end with a barbecue uh, lunch and we will say goodbye at that time. So expecting Saturday to be somewhere around 9, 9.30 to uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. So for those of you who are planners and want to um, book your ticket and get ready to come see your student, those are the dates. Uh, when you're here on campus, um, on the 17th in your folder, you will have a flyer that will give you more of you know the similar details so you can have something to hold on to. But I just wanted to share that with you because I'm already getting some calls from new parents who are uh, you know new family saying, are you planning it? When is it? So I thought I'd kind of share that with you. Um, with that, I'll give it back to um, the presenters today for their uh, for anything else they want to share. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Vinita. And and I think um, the theme of today's session, uh, though we didn't set the title, but the theme we were told about coming into the session was learning to let go. And I think how I would like to maybe tackle some of that is uh, I would almost try to find the phrasing of learning to let grow is probably the way I, I would also coin that as well is 
uh, what we aren't asking or what we're not encouraging is for folks to say, good luck, <laughs> see you later, and, and, and we wish you well. I think what we're seeing is that, uh, or what we're trying to get at is, is that we are target in any university, and this is now the fifth or sixth university I've worked at, um, any university, our, our goal in higher education is to help develop anyone who comes into our doors into a, a contributing member of society, <laughs> um, uh, whether that be regardless of their major, regardless of their, their intentions or profession. Um, and, and on this campus, a strong emphasis on leadership development with many of our students and cadets being managers their first day on the job, unlike a lot of universities where you know, student graduates are going to go into an entry level position. Um, uh, many of our students, a uh, significant number will will graduate and become officers on a vessel or direct managers um, in their set professions. And as we gear them up for that, there's a level of, of capability we want to help develop. Um, and, a, and a key element of that is self-advocacy, right? Like, so for example, I, I don't, uh, I think we we highlighted earlier, and I think Vanita's our one of the other sessions talked about FERPA, what we can and can't tell a parent, all these other things. But when you send us a message about your student either having a difficult time or wanting to confirm that they're doing well or want to give some some thoughts on something that we could be doing to assist them, that's wonderful. Like stay engaged, stay supportive, find ways to connect and support your student. The opportunity for us to either reverse engineer how to have that student come to that realization on their own becomes very valuable. And that's when we talk about things like the care team and other things like that. We don't walk up to them and say, hey, your mom called and said you weren't having a good week. You know, we don't want them to be like, that's why we the campus or others are trying to engage with them. We're like, hey, man, what have you been in, gotten into this week? Nothing. All right. Well, what can we help you find? How, what what? what would you like to do this week outside of just your homework and class, you know, and, and find a way to build up that self-motivation, that self-advocacy to solve their problems when they have them with departments or faculty or whomever, um, whether it be uh, how they navigate their roommate, if they're living on campus and, uh, and everything, how, how they're navigating that relationship. Um, there is growth through challenge. And that is, pretty much all university and all university settings. Uh, our roles are to support them through that challenge and to help them navigate those things. Uh, most of the solutions aren't just change rooms, can't you know drop that class or leave the school. That's not gonna be all how we're gonna solve all of our problems in the world. And so we're helping them you know, develop and cultivate uh, the, that skill set. And we acknowledge the challenge of that and it's never flawless because every person's unique. But um, as we do that, I think that's a collaborative effort for all of us to learning to let folks grow. And I, I think if we have that approach, um, that's probably the first real big step I would I would highlight is if your students have an issue, coach them up, send them to us. If it doesn't seem like they're communicating it well, feel free to reach out. We can only say so much. There's things your student can do that allows you to talk to us more and, and we can, we can navigate those things as we encounter them. But, um, but yeah, like we want to help them figure out how to find those solutions so that when they're on the job four years from now, five years from now, they're able to navigate those things themselves as functioning adults. Thank you. DC, you want to add something? Totally still all the good stuff. Um, Bessie, the, the part about getting out of your comfort zone, I call it embrace the squeeze. Where, you know, you have to kind of go through the motion of, of being, and I'm going to not correct English, squuzz. You got to be squuzz in order to come into something different and to, to come out of it into something new. And so embrace the squeeze because there's learning in that squeeze. Um, listen to your student, but don't lecture. They get a lecture at school. They want someone to listen to them. And sometimes that's the best gift you can give your student and your, your child or whatever family member is to listen and, and really just let them talk it out because sometimes they're processing and working through the problem while they're talking about it to you. Um, what I do with my children, even though they're out of school now, um, I still ask, like, how was your day, week? Uh, what did you learn? What did you do? 
Um, my eldest daughter just started, you know, her practice as a veterinarian, the, the culmination of her, you know, dream as a seven-year-old. And so like, what is it like? How does it feel? Did, did it, was it what you always thought? Like show interest in what they're doing. I am not a science person. And so when she would talk about stuff, I had no idea what she was talking about. And I would have that blank look. She's like, you don't get it. Right? I'm like, no, I don't. But I'm so excited that you do. So I'm always praising the fact that she's learning something and growing in her field. Um, my other daughter's businesswoman, again, not my area, but I'm listening to her planning her business. And I'm like, that sounds great. And how she's making connections. And so you, you are, you know, pushing from behind as they move forward. Um, promoting wellness. I know you're thinking, but they're healthy. Yes. And then they come to campus and there's pizza on the counter every day. And they can have pizza for breakfast, lunch, dinner. And so we try to say, you know, have a vegetable, throw something on top of the pizza that's green or a different color. Um, and so promote some wellness, promote sleeping, uh, promote getting out their programs on campus, join in and understand that there is no shame in asking for help. If you feel you need help, whether it is a counselor, the Title IX coordinator, the dean of students, anything, um, the tutor, ask for help. There's no shame in that. I call it the smart move when you see that you have something to overcome and you use the resources available to you to overcome it. Um, and then the perk, when you go and they tell you you have a package in the mail room and your parents have sent you a care package you take it back, you're showing it off to everybody as you walk back to your residence hall and you know you open it up and your roommate's jealous. You just got one over on them. That is the truth. The, the joy I see on students' faces when they come to the student mail room to pick up a package, it's amazing. Um, thank you both for that. Uh, I'm going to delve a little bit into the questions that are in chat, and then we'll come back to uh, some follow-up thoughts from you both. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, the first question I see is the website says uh, students must purchase gray shirts, blue shorts, and a blue cap to wear as orientation uniform. That is correct, but you've made that purchase already as part of your uniform packet, so it's in your initial issue. When you're there on the 17th, one of the two of the items that they'll pick up are the um, are the the pieces that we're talking about here. Um, you wanted a link to the QR code on the the RS for the RSVP. I've included that in um, the chat, so you could just click on it and uh, follow up on RSVPing there. Parent weekend is October four and October five. Friday and Saturday. Friday will start midday and Saturday we will end midday. That's just our programming. You are welcome to stay with your student for the rest of Saturday, all of Sunday. You can extend your visit here. Um, there are beautiful places around here to visit. Napa is always calling at least my name. Um, and um, one of the things I'm going to ask our presenters to talk about is all the things that you can do with your time, any tips they have for what you could do with not having one student at home that you have to care for. So that's coming up in a minute. Um, on the questions, if your student has not turned in their transcripts, oh, that was a message from DC. Thank you. Um, is there a way for parents to be added to the informational emails from school? So if we think back to what Lennon might have mentioned a few minutes ago, that there's not a lot of communication that is designed between parents and campus. We do have some fun stuff that might be coming up and I'm happy to share that uh, as well as um, I keep you updated the best I can on the Keelhaller family Facebook page. Uh, often when I'm walking across campus, I'll take pictures of students and post them there so you get a glimpse of what your uh, students doing that particular day. Uh, but other than that, there aren't 
too many emails that are designed to be sent out to families. Lennon wants to say something. Yeah, and maybe it's not the emails, but there is also other social media that uh, Cal Mary Time has, whether it be our Instagram, whether it be our LinkedIn page, where a lot of the uh, bigger activities do get some promotional uh, elements going on. So if you're looking for more like uh, understanding some of the other successes or, or cool things about the campus, because you want to be able to share like, hey, my student goes to Cal Mary time and they just won some award or they just got this. Um, obviously, those things get hosted on our, our main kind of drop page on the website where there's kind of a news feed, but also our I would say our Instagram uh, as well as our um uh, a LinkedIn page are both places where a lot of things like the conferences our, our students attend, the uh, competitions they compete in. Um, and then I would also check out the athletics website uh, as that has a lot of the upcoming games and tournaments, things that we host and or compete in. So um, there's a few places to get information, but not so much a parent listserv email that uh, is kind of spamming out messaging to, to families. That is primarily Vanita's area. And I think, like you said, her Facebook page is the primary tool for that. Thank you, Lennon. Um, I do send out uh, one or two emails, uh, you know, throughout the, the year, but they're few and far between. Um, what time are the uniforms pick up? So the time your student received in their email, um, 10 o'clock, as someone mentioned earlier, or one o'clock, that's the time you come in. And the first thing you do is pick up. And 30 minutes later is when... Um, is when housing is expecting you. So we are, are timing this. You arrive at the time that is in your email. And you don't have to think of any other time. Um, what should we expect at the Cal um, Mixer this weekend in LA Harbor? It says it's from 11 to 3, or is it come and go as you please? Do either of you have an idea about this? I have not attended, but I, my understanding is that those mixers are hosted through our, uh, we kind of have like local alumni slash admissions recruiter chapters that host those events. Um, uh, as I'm overseeing orientation and will be here, uh, I won't be attending any trips to LA or anything. Um but uh, there's like a light program, but it's not super in-depth. Usually it's an introduction of who's representing there and how folks can ask different questions of the official representation from Cal Mary time, as well as get to meet some of the other local area students who are going up there. And that becomes a great tool as people will definitely get a chance to meet each other during orientation. But it's a great opportunity for uh you know, students do not feel like, hey, I don't know anyone when I go up there. Coming to that mixer allows for a student to meet another student from the area, might be a future road tripper for the holidays, things like that. Um, but uh, that's kind of the target is so that kind of breaks away that a person doesn't show up to orientation and feels like I've had no chance to meet anyone um, for some of our students. I think they usually do want to NorCal as well. So uh, there usually is a couple of those mixers that go around some of our key areas for recruitment. Um, so I just texted someone while uh, Lennon was sharing the information. If I get anything in in response, I will share um, with you guys. Or if you could send me that question at orientation at csum.edu, I can find out more and, and respond. Um, do parents usually accompany the student while they pick up uniform at PIAC or are we expected to wait in the car? So we discourage parents from going into the space where the uniforms are being picked up, but you don't have to wait in the car. You'll park your car, you'll walk into PIAC, and while your student is picking up their uniform, you're gonna spend some time with us, ask us any questions, get your folder, um, get a bagel to eat, enjoy some coffee while your students got your, are, are doing their, their uniform thing. Uh, you're waiting in the car when the student's getting dropped off at the res hall, and the driver of the car has to drive away and meet up with the family later. Um, if you want any more details uh, on that, please go ahead and send me an email and I'll be happy to um, write you a response. Do shoes come with the uniform? Uh, yes and no. So your um, Oxfords that you wear with your khaki if you're in the core are included. And you're also expected to have a steel-toed boot, which 
your student has to get on their own. Um, I will, while the presenters are speaking, um, I will go back onto our website and find that link where you can get the information on the boots and include it in this chat momentarily. Um, I've put in the dates and times of the um, family weekend in the chat so you could grab it from there. Uh, do parents usually, oh, I read that already. Um, for the initial PT uniform pickup, Will I be able to exchange for the right sizing before the capping ceremony? I would like PT uniform to fit me well uh, for the ceremony. Uh, you may not get the chance to do that. It depends. Uh, the, the exchanges will only happen between 4 and 6.30. If you filled out your sizing sheet uh, ahead of time, and that is with the bookstore, they've been able to... Uh, create your package in the man in the manner that it'll fit you but you could open it up and take an estimate of how well it'll go on you and talk to them then and there so um but you will not be able to go back and do an exchange until 4 30 that day i'm sorry four o'clock that day not related to today but what is the dress code and grooming code for things like bracelets and facial hair Lennon. Yes, exciting. Um, so this is the first year in its 97 years of existence that Cal Maritime will have um, what we are coining as traditional students. So uh, individuals who are not uh, members of the Corps of Cadets, uh, and that is somewhat driven by curriculum, somewhat driven by choice. But um, if your student is not a member of the Corps of Cadets, then there is a dress code. Um, the dress code, and I think the same link that Vanita is going to put in with details about the uniform, there's a tab on that same link that has the dress code uh, that should be on there, assuming it's the link I think you're going to put in there. If not, I'll find an alternative link and throw <laughs> it in. Um, but uh, the dress code is going to be a how Mary time assigned our, our designated polo. Uh, uh, there's two versions. I think there's a short sleeve and a long sleeve. There's a... Uh, I'll just talk about the basic outfit. So they'll wear the polo. Uh, they'll be able, they'll wear uh, pants. The pants are um, of their own. They purchase their own pants. So unlike the uniform where all the items are are designated and issued through Cal Mary time, um, the dress code, the only issued elements are the pants, or sorry, the polos and the pullover fleece and the jacket. The pants associated with the dress code are uh, purchased their own. So we can go to, I don't know, JC Penney's if they're still operating, um, Macy's, anywhere. But they're a solid pant. Um, they could be black, brown, khaki, uh, or tan. And um, they just need to be solid pants, not denim, uh, no rips, no multiple pocket uh, things. Think of slacks. Or something like that, or chinos, or some some style of pants similar to that. Um, in the dress code, there is no grooming standard. So um, the grooming uh, components are not associated with being a traditional student. So, for example, if I with my if you can see my see my dreadlocks, uh, uh, I could be I could have my dreadlocks and be a cadet. I could have my dreadlocks and be a traditional student. But if I were a cadet, I'd have to tie it back to a single point and have my hat on when I'm outdoors. Um, as a traditional student, there is no guidelines on how I would style or wear my dreads. Um, uh, regarding beards and other, other facial hair, piercings and so on, there's no guidelines on that associated with being a traditional student um, from a day-to-day -day function. The only real elements of consistency, and this also kind of tackles another question I saw in the chat around uh, steel toed shoes if you're not uh, on the ship or, or um, if you're in a non-licensed major, is students may elect to do certain activities or projects that would require them to wear whatever the appropriate safety gear is. So since we do have the ship, if there were students that are like, I want to get the the job, you know, on the ship that sells, you know, um, uh, candy during the, the summer, that person, even if they're not a licensed major, would need to get the appropriate 
you know, footwear, the steel toe boots, those different things, depending on the activities they want to do. Same for obviously our students who have lab classes, things like that. They may require, even if they're a traditional student, they may say, because we're handling chemicals and flames, you must tie your hair back and wear some form of headgear and things like that. So that's going to be more guided by the curriculum of the individual classes and the safety guidelines by the faculty. But um, from a day-to-day -day standpoint, polo, pants, appropriate uh, jacket or fleece are the dress code elements that are uh, consistent. Thank you, Lennon. I was checking my um, phone, so I apologize. Did you mention um, hair and bracelets and jewelry in general for cadets as well? Who are um, Did you for, mention that? For cadets, I don't want to misspeak. Uh, they just updated the uniform standards in that document. So I don't recall bracelets being an issue. I know students are able to wear watches. I think the excessiveness of those bracelets may have guidelines, like in the sense of some people have a bracelet that starts here and goes all the way down their arm. I'm very confident that won't be approved. But when you think of like a single bracelet with like someone with their watch, I haven't seen too much issues about that, at least over the last couple of years. But I would just, you know, if worst case, wait till 4.30, wear it after, you know, the you know, wear it at night uh, or on the weekends. But um, uh, I, I can't speak specifically the bracelets, but about hair, uh, there are guidelines around hair, facial hair, uh, like no beards. They're allowed to have mustaches. They must tie their hair back to a single point if it goes beyond their ears. So those are elements in the uh, core guidelines that will that the students will receive as well. Um, Thank but you. To, to reiterate, uh, it, our hair policy is gender neutral, so there is not a separate guideline for male, female, transgender, anything non-binary, anything like that. So um, uh, that so that just means you're, if your student does have long hair, they don't have to cut it all off. They just need to tie it back to a single point if they are a cadet. Um, it, with regard to bracelets, yes, uh, you could wear a bracelet as long as it's one bracelet. Um, and um, like Lennon mentioned, it can't be, it has to be a reasonable uh, style of bracelet. Um, do students in non-licensing majors have to wear steel toe boots? Yes. Um, if they're going to be on the ship, which often non-licensed majors do, uh, like ME non-licensed will also have some classes and work on the ship, they'll be expected to wear steel toed boots, but, um, so that's why we've taken it out of the initial uh, issue and you can buy it personally based on what fits best. And I shared the link right there. Uh, and maybe to co-sign on that just briefly, um, the way I would phrase it as well is at some point a student may need them. And if they do, they need to be in the guidelines of what the steel toed boot is. But if they are a cadet, but they're non-licensed. So if I have a business major, who is non-licensed cadet, the likelihood of them needing their steel toe will be curriculum based. So they'll likely pick a curriculum or a position on campus that need, requires them to start being in those spaces. That would be the time where they should buy the regulation steel toe boot. If they are a business major or ISS or oceanography and they have no standard reason to go on the ship like uh, and do any kind of work, it's one thing to do a tour, but if they're going to do work on the ship of any kind, then they would need to acquire them. So I would say if you could hold off a little bit if you're like, hey, money's tight. I don't want to buy these steel toe boots if they're not going to wear them for six months. Absolutely. Um, hold off on that. I would say if your student is an engineer or marine transportation, any kind of engineer or marine transportation, they will need steel toe boots within the first two weeks of them starting uh, class, like if not the first week when they start taking classes on the ship. So definitely... I would encourage to get those immediately for all of our engineers and all of our marine transportation. We do not have a barber on campus, so they will have to uh, arrange to get their haircuts um, uh, within the proximate area. Um, do students um, in the Corps of Cadets also get polos? They do not. Um, with what information should all the luggage be labeled? Ro name, room number, nothing else. Just the name and the room number is sufficient. Thank you for asking. Um, do steel toe boots need to be certain color? Black. So the newest regulation is black. So 
be very careful and buy only black. Uh, that's what the the regulation course will will be sent to the students will say. Um, can you provide a link for care package for parents? Um, it will be, it was shared by our um, dining folks and I promise it'll be in your packet when you arrive. One of the flyers that we'll give you will have the information for care packages for parents. That, it's wonderful if you work with our folks here on campus to get them something, but when we were talking about care packages, you could package something on your own and send it as well uh, or work with Amazon or something like that. You're not re only required to work with us for care packages. Um, also saw on the website that overnight facial hair growth is not allowed. Is this still strictly not allowed? Let me, um, I'll chime in that one. Um, yes, thank I, you. Once again, I'm one of the policies people in conduct and behavior. So uh, I think if we're talking about the concept of a five o'clock shadows, basic overnight stubble, I think that's going to vary human to human. Uh, I am not blessed with facial hair. If I cut this, it's not going to come back in three months. Uh, and so I don't. Uh, if, if, if there are some students who could shave this morning and then by the afternoon, we'll have a full beard. Uh, that is, becomes culturally known and understood individually based. Um a lot of that language in the guidelines around that is definitely for those majors who are going to be at sea. Uh, there is re requirements for the safety reasons for the fire suppression gear that they could potentially wear in case of an emergency. They have to be able to form that seal and facial hair prevents that seal from being created. So that's why that guideline exists. So it, it does have a far more um, stringent application during the times when the ship is at sea than it does maybe day to day. But the general idea would be is that the sh a student should be clean shaven or a manicured mustache uh, uh, for facial hair if they're navigating that. Thank you. Um, I apologize for the change in our ability to support a barber on campus. We will not have barber services uh, on campus. it uh, We we have had them, but that's a change that um, I've had to share with you. Uh, can I wear steel toe boots as my regular shoes? Uh, I'm afraid not. You can, as long as you're in khakis, you must wear your Oxfords. Any, any other uniform that you're wearing, you're welcome to wear your st steel toe boots. So if you're in your overalls, no, coveralls, Work you here. may... Mm -hmm. If you're in your work gear, your still toe shoes are appropriate. So if you're in your dress uniform, which is the white and black, or if you're in your khaki uniform, um, uh, I don't believe this steel toed boots would be appropriate based off of the current rules and regulations. Um, I know for sure that with the, the like uh, Lena mentioned, with the new uh, regs and uh, and our focus on making sure everyone is looking uniform, uh, definitely at formation, which will happen twice a week. Um, when you come in, your inspection of khaki will be with black shoes, your black uh, Oxfords, which the, the brand is called Bates. Uh, and you will, if you show up with your boots, you'll be sent back to your room to correct the, the infraction. So... All right, um, lots of questions. Thank you very much um, for these. I'll give our presenters a chance to share any last words of wisdom uh, and we'll go back to questions. You can go first. <laughs> um, words of wisdom. I've been jotting notes, but I think I've jotted, I've gone through my entire note list. But I, I am truly looking back on my children's academic journey. It is okay to miss your student. It's okay if you're like, when you're there, you're like, it's all good. Go, be gone. I'm going to have the best life ever. And they get in the car and cry in the six-hour drive home. That's okay. It happens. Um, but know that your student is going through a wonderful adventure where they're going to come out as the same yet different, right? And they're, they're going to be come out as the, as the adult version of that seven-year-old with that dream of being whatever they wanted to be. And so you're there to 
really think about how can you support and really help your student become the best adult version of themselves. Uh, like I said, sometimes it's listening, sometimes it's giving the, the, the advice of the age of wisdom. Uh, sometimes it's sending a package. Sometimes it's a surprise trip to visit them and take them out to dinner. It can be some, sometimes it's just saying, you know what, I need you to handle this on your own. And then it's okay to give a little tough love as well. So I think really, you know your student better than we know your student at this time. We hope to know them better, um, but that you are going to gauge what they need in order to mature in, in a way that is successful for them. Um, you know, and, and then upon graduation and at, when my kids graduated with their bachelors, I was like, oh, this is so great. I was so happy. I'm cheering, I'm yelling. But I can truly say when my eldest daughter graduated with her um, doctorate in veterinary science, I cried because I was like, this is the culmination of their dream. So if your student's dream is to become a, a mariner at graduation, Think about all the wonderful things they did to prepare to get to this point, how you've been there to watch them as they stumbled and then got up, stumbled again, got up. They just kept trying and you were there pushing them to keep trying. And then, you know, as they walk across the stage, you yell, you cheer, you laugh and then cry because not only have they fulfilled their dream, but you fulfilled your dream too as a parent to give your student the best options and chance they can to be the person that they want to be. That's so nice. Thank you. You want a tissue? Because I thought that was good, right? <laughs> that was. That was. Um, Lennon, any last few things that you want to point out? Yeah, and I, I, I'm usually the the other side of the coin to all that positivity. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I guess, and, and this kind of picks up from something that came up in the last meeting, which is um, college is hard. It is meant to be hard. It's designed to be hard. And that's college in a global statement. Universities exist all over the world. And each one of them is challenging and, and difficult to navigate. Cal Maritime is designed to be more, to have more elements of challenge and accountability than a traditional four-year state university or traditional university that you're remotely thinking about. That's not meant to scare anyone, but it's really meant to prepare people for that challenge. If you've had a student who is older, who's gone to another university, they likely aren't waking up for formation. They likely aren't, aren't gonna have a dress code if they don't have formation. Um, they're not gonna have some of these guidelines and these functions that are, are asked of Cal Mary time. And if someone were to say, well, why? Why does Cal Mary time do this? Why is it making it adding these barriers or adding these challenges or being more difficult. Uh, I shared earlier about most of our students are going to graduate and be managers. They're not, they're going to skip the part of being the rookie in the office and the entry level professional. That's the vast majority of our, 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 our students. Um, and I'm not just lumping in everyone as a licensed track student. Many of our business students are managers immediately. Many of our ISS students are managers immediately. Many uh, leading some level of team or unit are things like that. Um, many of our oceanographers are hopping in the labs where they're handling, there's five, they're one of five or six people handling all kinds of research. These are high demand, high functioning, high paying positions that the students that come to Cal Maritime aim to go into as their career path. And that comes with a high ask. Uh, I've, I've been fortunate to work at multiple universities and there's very few places, there's very few majors or professions that ask people to take other humans' lives in their hands. All of our mariners do that. Every one of our, our merchant Marines, whether they choose to go into the Coast Guard, whether they go into the Navy after this, whether they go into the Merchant Marine Corps and they just start working at, at, at an oil rig or anything like that, that vessel will have 24, 26 people on it in the middle of the ocean. And they are going to be one of the top six ranking officers their first day on the job. It's a high ask. And so that high ask is difficult. And we are here to help them be successful. 
growth is difficult, but we are here to help them be successful. And um, we know that you have their success in mind as well. So I think as we all lean into that and we all come together on that, we can navigate those challenges uh, as one. Thank you. Not tissues, but very true and uh, very empowering. Thank you. Um, JP, I can stay behind and speak to you about your shoes, but for everyone, I want them to uh, want to clarify. There are two shoes. You're going to get one in your uniform initial issue. You will be given a bait. It's part of your uniform. Part You've paid for it already. You're going to get those shoes. The second pair of shoes you need when you work on the ship or uh, do any kind of lab work and those are specifics, that is a pair of boots that you need to buy which I are identified. There are three recommended brands and we have put those on our website. I've shared it a couple times uh, in the chat already. So stick with one of those, stick with black, get a boot that fits you well on your own, but your baits that are part of your uniform, the formal Oxfords, those are already ready for you in your box when you arrive on campus uh, to be given that. Um, could you please clarify when students are only required to clean shave every morning when uh, on the ship and not just in classes every day if overnight growth is high? You want for to take clarity that? for clarity. The goal is not the minimum. The goal is the expectation. So they should shave every day. I think my comment was is that some students who even shave every day may still have noticeable stubble by the end of that same business day that the staff who oversee that will respect that this person was clean shaven at the start of the day and they have growth if a person knows that they have that level of growth and they shave this morning and then they don't shave they have a five o'clock shadow at five o'clock and then they let it go overnight and then they show up and they have a thick notable stubble they will likely not be in 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 within regulations for the grooming my my analogy was is that i don't grow facial hair at that rate so i could shave today and i probably wouldn't have to shave for over two weeks and I, no one would be like, oh, look at how much facial hair he's acquired in that same block of time. So it's nuanced because every person's different, but they should look clean shaven daily. Um, but even that five o'clock shadow, that person may need to shave multiple times a day at sea to be within regs for safety reasons. It would be that highlight. So uh, it was not meant to be implied that they should not shave daily. It's more of if, you sh if you're going to have that much growth overnight, then you should be shaving regularly um, to be within those regulations. Thank you. Um, I have information on the question about the LA Harbor mixer. It is a summer send off and it is at capacity. Um, the, um, the registration for that closed last week. So there are no more additional opportunities to attend, but it is very casual. It is being hosted by uh, one of our foundation uh, members who is also an alum. His name is John Betts. And it, it is going to be pretty casual. There'll be some alumni there and some staff will be there and you will go there with your student and uh, get an opportunity to get a feel for what the alumni do, how committed they are to your students and how they participate in, in many things that go on. Uh, one of which is right after your student gets here, that following Friday after they have been in class for two days, we'll be bringing alumni back to campus to, or we'll be bringing alumni to campus to meet with your students uh, and those who are returning to, to school. Um, so they are committed and they host these uh, send-offs over summer to get you acclimated to what you can expect, much like what Lennon is talking about. Get ready for the challenge and um, and, and your time at Cal Maritime. Um, do dorms have ironing irons and ironing boards? I think no. And um, I heard someone mention uh, in one of the previous calls that it's, it's I, more ideal to bring like a handheld steamer for the uniforms than the bulky ironing board and iron. So that's just a suggestion. Where do other students go for haircuts? If my student doesn't have a car, do they need to take a bus to barber in town? Uh, Vanina, if I can chime in, mm -hmm. um, 
so uh, in a respect that Vanita apologized uh, on behalf of the entire institution regarding the barber component. Um, so essentially the the previous contract we had with a barber expired and there are some issues with the renewed contract. And so as we navigate those components, I would say is that the at the very first day of class, there will not be a barber because of the process we go through to secure that. So like you said, on a prior call, there might've been a barber, yes. That probably was the case at the time during that call. And then for the first time in the last three years, there's been an issue with the contract and who that barber has been. And so as that's getting resolved, there will not be a barber the first day. There are some, I don't want to promise on this call. So if you're recording on the side and say the, the dean said that you guys would do the following, we are looking at alternatives for how to uh, support uh, uh, that opportunity for the haircuts and different elements. Um, uh, those just aren't solutions that I can share at this time, um, but we're working pretty diligently. So with this being the last call, we may not be able to get on a call regarding what those, that looks like, but your students will get some guidance around, um, uh, and it'll likely come from the Office of Cadet Leadership and Development, but they will get some guidance on um, how to stay within regulations, uh, haircutting, those different things. Uh, that will be offered as the school year begins. It may just not be the structured contracted barber that we've had in the past. So that's why we want to be mindful of what that looks like when we get the new agreement in place. So um, I would say day one, there is not currently a barber in place because we don't have an active contract. So we wouldn't want a false promise uh, about what it'll look like, but it is being worked on as we speak. Thank you. Uh, we're a minute past our uh, hour. I'm not seeing any additional questions uh, coming uh, to us in chat. Um, I'd like to thank our presenters, uh, DC and Lennon. Thank you both for being here. And um, But above all, I want to thank our parents who are committed, families who want to be there for their students and support them through this uh, new chapter of their life. So thank you very much for being part of today's call and the seven before now. And um, we hope and we, we we're looking forward to seeing all of you on the 17th between now and next in the next 10 days. Should anything come up, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, orientation at csum.edu. We're here to answer your questions. And um, I had shared my phone number with everyone. If uh, you need to reach out to me by text, uh, feel free to do that or call. Feel free to do that as well. Thank you again and uh, see you soon. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye-bye. JP, I'm here for you. What do you want? Okay, so regarding the shoes, you, um, you said something about like they check that you have the specific type of brand of shoe and I just looked it up and if like my shoe gets damaged, it's a hundred dollars to replace them. That, yes, been that there, And I was looking around and there are a lot of cheaper alternatives. Sure there are, but that's the regulation and we'd like for you to be in regulation with that shoe. Okay. Um. What if I find something that looks close enough and just don't, don't tell anyone? Um, it's a good question for you to ask the director for um, cadet leadership and development. Um, you met him uh, at one of our sessions, how to be a cadet, but you'll see him often enough. Should you have that situation arise where you damage your shoe and you need to replace it, work with him to find out what's the best solution. Uh, in addition, we do have um, used uniforms and shoes that uh, students who leave the campus or uh, when they graduate, they leave those behind and we service them as best as we can and make them available to students in, in, in times of a pinch. So don't hesitate to look through that and see if there's anything that works for you there. Used shoes is slightly more appealing than paying a hundred. I'm not suggesting you do anything in particular, but I'm giving you your options. Okay. Okay. Hi, Cole. How can I help? I was, I was curious about the international business major. Do you have to have uh steel-toed boots for those as well? Um, 
like Lennon mentioned, don't jump to buy those right away. You know where the links are. You know which one. If you want to try one out and know which one of those threes work works best for you. Um, wait till the need comes up and you find out that you need to have it. And then you can always um, buy and have it shipped. I would recommend that. As an IBL student, you might not need the steel-toed boots. Might not. So give it, give it a week or so and find out from your faculty. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Angra. Uh, hi, I have a question regarding the boots because I purchased my own boots, the uh, work boots that are steel toes, but they are not from like the links provided. Is Would that be fine or they like pretty much look the exact same and they're all black as well? Perfect. Um, I would bring them and just have um, your, are you MT or, M, uh, or engineer? Are you a deck student or an engine student? I am an, uh, I'm an engine student. Engine student, just check with one of your um one of your uh, core leadership students and uh, check with them. Check with maybe Jay Harkham, who's your director for CLD. Um, don't wear the shoes and 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 dirty them as yet. I would just ask, and if there is need to change them, which I doubt, but um just if you can check and if you need to exchange them consider keep that option open okay thank okay. you okay if it's steel toed you should be fine black and steel toed should be fine often now those uh those types of shoes are coming with alternate to steel toes and we definitely don't want those so if you bought a steel toed shoe or boot you don't should be okay with those other shoes uh yeah, I was just I was just wondering that question because they follow the same guidelines as like the ones like required for uh engineering students. So okay. Sounds so, good. Okay. All right, thank you. Are you good? Okay. JP, yeah. is your hand still up because uh you have another question or yes, I re-raised it. Um okay. I was actually I found this out while I was in con, I forgot, but I remembered. Um I was checking my uh, a cash net thing for payments and I saw it was updated which I'm assuming is um adding like the cost of tuition which wasn't calculated before but it didn't give me a new statement so am I right to assume that's the that's like the um class fees or should I wait on that um you should have received everything. Uh, if you can forward what you have to me, I can get that looked at and get back with you. I wouldn't know just from you telling me about this right off. I, the I'm sorry. My internet cut out right when I finished talking. Did you say something? I'm sorry. I said, if you can forward the information to me, I will uh, check into it and get back with you. I can't give you a definitive response uh, from just what you've mentioned. Okay. Okay, do I just screenshot the yes. statement that was there before? And okay, okay, yes, okay. That would be perfect. Okay, sounds good. Um, I think I emailed you before, so I think I had your email. I think I... It's orientation at csum.edu. Uh, if I'm just emailing the a general email, would it be better if I emailed financial or should I still go with that one? Just send it to me. That way I know I've sent it to the right person and keep an eye on the response. Okay. That We're all good. getting super busy around here, so I don't want it to get missed. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right. Um, we'll see you soon. And if, if you think of anything after this meeting is over, please email me uh, and we will meet on the 17th. Oh, Benita, I'm sorry. Hi, this is Alicia. Oh, it's okay, Alicia. Sorry to um, add really quick. On a couple of the links, it had boots with the composite toe, and we don't want composite toe. We want steel, we want steel toe, yes. Okay, so we would just look through the website and find a tall eight inch steel toe black boot. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Of course. Last call. All right. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your summer and we'll see you on the 17th. Bye.